Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and you're here hopefully to um, learn how to needle felt an A5 Seascape. Maybe you've got our Seascape pack, then uh, in fact this one is a kit even if it's got tools in it. Not too late to order them now if you um, haven't got it. it uh, remember all of our live streams stay on as tutorials on our um, YouTube channel. If you are not sub subscribed yet, then please go and subscribe and then you get notification for future live streams, um, anything that we've got to offer. And uh, please do tell your friends about it as well. There's so much on our channel. We've got a playlist that breaks it down so you can find more appropriate um, maybe workshop tutorials or technical tips and so on more easily from um, how we how we use our products to um, specific techniques such as wrapping wire with wool there's lots on fairies there's lots on techniques on needle felting animals so there's there's absolutely loads that we have got to offer so do do uh, join our um, channel and th certainly if you're watching live today which is the 10th of August give us the thumbs up or give us the thumbs up if you're not uh, watching live and um, on our live streams if you don't know this yet we have a giveaway every time and there is one today as well and um, let's have a look what you can win today and here we go so uh, price today's price we have got our fairy decoration bundle number two they're back in stock and you could be the lucky winner to get one today if you tell us if you were stranded on an island, what is the one thing you could not live without? So pop it into the comments on our live stream. If you don't know how to comment on our live streams, then if you're watching this live on YouTube, you have to be signed in um, into um, the YouTube channel. You can do this in different ways. I'm usually signed in via Google. Um, you don't have to let us know that you're there unless you're commenting, obviously. Then we know we do know that you're there. And we're also repeating this on a Thursday evening at 7 p.m. on Facebook, which will be the 12th of July. No, we're in August. 12th of August, 2021, where you can also win that same fairy decoration bundle too um, again and just to remind you there's over 150 uh, separate decorations in there to to get um, to get to decorate your fairies and uh, we we hopefully by the end of this live stream we've got this live um, on our website as well so if you want to buy one there's always limited numbers so you have to be pretty quick to get your hands on it but we're currently um, in the process of making this live if you watch any other time you might be lucky to get one or they might already be sold out again we only have a certain amount um, that we've done up and I will just show you them a little bit closer up because there is just so much in it that um, it's hard to even begin to to name it all but there are over a hundred and fifty individual items tiny little toadstools little um, uh, little decorations there, tiny little butterflies and uh, little stars. We've got some wings in there, some crowns. Uh, you've got lots of uh, lovely trimmings in there, different ones for different occasions. Flowers, lots of little flowers, a little magic wand for your fairy. Um, we've got some wing material here, tulle fabric. There are three different types. And then we've got some lovely rainbow colored um leaves there you can take the jute string out and just use the leaf so you can cut it to measure so there's plenty in there um, for your beautiful fairies to be decorated with or whatever you're decorating maybe you're not even into fairies um, if you watch us long enough you will be <laughs> that's it so you can win this today so tell us what is the one thing that you can absolutely not be without if you are um, standard on a on a on an island that's what we want to know from here from you and I'm just gonna say hello to a few people because there are some people watching so I have a quick look who is here today so we have got oh hi Jane Sandra Ashley um, Diane oh Di uh, Diane says I'm puppy sitting today uh, for my daughter but turned it on now oh puppy sitting how lucky are you uh, vampire venom is there hello um marion is there meg rachel is there hi fluffy friends rachel and daniel here hope you feel better soon ashley we are on day eight of isolation my daughter's had covid but feeling much better now oh wretched um covid um let's see what ashley did say ashley said hello everyone lying in bed watching this with a dog 
while I nurse a migraine. Oh, poor you, Ashley. It's um, that's um, that's a real beast. I try not to um to be too loud in your in your face. Keep it subdued today. Um, we've also got Alison there. Hello. Um, Joe is there, and of course Emma is there. Um, as the uh, little voice in my ear. Um. Ah, oh, I love it. Um, so Vampire Venom says, My sister, Vampire Midnight, mm -hmm, there's a theme going, is interested but can't watch live or to replay on Thursdays as she's a care worker but is hoping to catch up later. Yay! Well, um, you just have to comment for her, Vampire Venom. Catherine is there. Hello, Catherine. Um, uh, this um, yes, we mentioned Diane. Donna is there. Hello, Donna from um, Scotland. I hear that you've got freedom back as well now. Um, Lorna is there. Hello, Lorna. Hi, hi Diana. Even further up in, in um, Scotland. I, ga I doubt that you've noticed anything different. I don't know. Um, it would be interesting to hear on the Isle of Mull. Um, and we've got O van der Meer. And, oh, she was already commenting she can't be without her scuba equipment. Um, I think I've mentioned everybody now, so I'm going to start. Oh, no, we've got uh, the fighting felter. And we're already going into, the, she couldn't live without my dogs. Ah, uh, I'd be the same. I'd, I'd be very torn. Very torn. Anyway, so let's start this out. Um, so in your box, if you have got our box, let's open this up because if you haven't got it, you might have some of this stuff knocking around at home. It's not, um, there's some stuff that's a bit more, um, what's the word? Ah, oh, can't open this because it's taped up. Sorry, guys. It has got a tape on there. Right. Um, right. So in the box, if you get the, if you have the box, you will find the instructions. So even if I make no sense to you whatsoever, which is entirely possible. You have got step-by-step -step instructions that you can follow. Um, there is also a template in there, so that's really helpful for when you have to use the water-soluble paper to draw on. So that takes you from the beginning to the end. You've got a whole palette of wool here. Really lovely. I like literally it's painting with wool. You get um, our eco wool match, which remember you have to use so that the hessian is sandwiched inside. And you obviously take that label off and um, you can compost this when you're done with it. So you can put it straight into your into your compost. And then you have in here one coarse and two medium felting needles. You also have a piece of the water soluble paper in there and you get your A5 felt sheet. Let's talk about the felt a little bit more. So this is made from wool and viscous. It is actually really, really thin but super strong so it doesn't sort of um uh, go out of shape it does bend it um it does stretch a tiny bit but really hardly visible and um the best thing is you can punch it as much as you want with a needle and it makes no holes and also the the next best thing is it doesn't squeak i don't like squeaky felt it gives me the creeps so this is a perfect felt for needle felting on and we use this all the time for our pictures and um let's take that one off and just bring bring out the relevant things that I need for now. So um, I'm only using my palette at the moment, and I'm in fact I'm starting out with all the lovely um, blues here. That's the one thing that I need right now. Now you can obviously felt onto that small felting mat that I've got here, and then you just move it along because you've got to lift your mat off all the time. I'm gonna stick with my earth mat because it's the best thing since sliced bread, and I love needle felting onto it. So and it's a nice big size. We also do it in A5, so you can um, you can have it exactly matching the um, the size here. Got my needle at the ready, but before I I start, I have to draw my basic um, scene on there. And for this, I'm opening up the um, instructions, and you can see um, Emma's just said, make sure you have a straight horizon, Steffi. <laughs> I'm terrible for uh, not putting uh, straight horizons in there. Anyway, so straight horizon. Okay, let's let's please Emma. Straight line. There. That's my horizon. And then I have got um, a cliff coming from one side. And the sea is like a big pool, like a big cheesy wedge there. And 
that's basically all the lines you need to draw. So draw a straight horizon. Is that straight enough, Emma? Um, the cliff is coming down from one side, and then it sort of that's the the shore, that's the the beach here. And just to show you that for real, you've got your straight horizon, you've got the cliff, and then the shoreline like a wedge of cheese in um, with a sea in the middle. And um, that's all you need to draw on there um, for now. You don't need to uh, do anything else uh, to get started. And then you've got um, three colors that will be perfect for the sky. Now, it's best to mix these colors. If you want to have a darker sky, then obviously use the darker blue or use more of the darker blue. Or um, if you want a light sky, don't use it at all. But I'm mixing all three colors now. I'm working in really small patches. Um, even batches and patches because you don't you really don't want to uh, put too much on there also the great thing is this felt is already blue which makes it really easy to um, let a little bit of blue shine through and all I'm doing is I'm literally painting my wool onto there by spreading it out and that's my first bit of the sky that I've covered and then I'm stabbing into it with my coarse felting needle to fasten it on my favorite noise I think if I was stranded on a on a lone island I would have a tape that makes that noise just that and then I sit I sit there wait to be rescued while I listen to the needle punching through the wool how nice is that so Punch the wool through the felt with your needle and then you have to lift it off your mat. I can literally sort of peel it off because the fibers will be coming out at the other end and they sink straight into the into your felting mat. And then you just repeat the process. There's no great plan in how you at the moment color in the sky. Just let the clouds do their own bit and then look at it later and see if you need to add a bit more here or there. You can also just add white into it for a nice sort of like a, a happy little cloud not a heavy one just a happy little cloud in the sky um, and felt it down I'm not too worried about keeping this line here on top of the cliff or here by the sea too um, strict because I only have to worry about that in a minute when I'm actually putting the cliff and the sea into it and um, just use very little wool. You will need to use more of this dark blue with um, the rowing boat and you will have to have some white left to put. Ah, oh, I should have thought of this. Um, what are these white horses on the sea? That's it. I keep forgetting what they're called. White horses on the sea for later when we, um, when we get to that point. So I'm just stabbing that in. If you've never needle felted before, this might look like complete um, witchcraft to you. It is actually quite a magical process. The needle itself looks like this. It's got a, got a little sort of hook at the end, like a right angle, um, like a right angle bit sticking out there. The working part of the needle is in fact only that bit from here to there where it's sort of quite a, um, this one is a triangular needle so you can just about see the triangular um, shape. If you cut it in half and you looked at it in profile you would see it's a triangle. And then you have got little little uh, notches in the needle and they catch the wool as you stub it in and that makes the crunching noise because they're sort of crunching them together. and. Um, and that's it. And all you need to do is stab the needle straight in. So you can come from the side. You can do that. But you also have to come out the side. Or you can go straight in. You can do this standing on your head. Though I wouldn't recommend it. And certainly don't tell anybody I told you to do that. So that's um, basically the only rule is to stab the needle in and out in a straight line. Um, not It's not knitting. It's not crocheting. It's not sewing. It's got absolutely nothing to do with any other needle craft. It's one that's completely on its own, needle felting. Nothing to do with anything else. So it's a it's a very easy to learn skill because everybody can stab a needle into, into wool. Um, and the, the landscape pictures or the 2D pictures or seascapes or whatever you fancy doing, they're a really great um, way to get into needle felting because you don't have to worry so much about the sculpting, 3D sculpting. So that's quite an easy thing to do. So now I've, I've completely accidentally patterned my sky here. I've just literally put the wool down 
and um, it looks a little bit like that from the back. Now you can use multi-tools. Somebody said the other day, um, why would you use multi-tools? And I said, well, because I, you can speed your work up. And they said, well, I don't want to speed my work up. I said, well, don't use any multi-tools then. It's as simple as that. If you happen to have the Clover five needle tool, this is a great one because it really works well to speed your work up, flatten the wool down a little bit faster. Sometimes you don't want to flatten the wool down because you want to have that 3D effect. That works really well. I love this one because it works on our earth-friendly felting mat. It works on the eco wool mat. You don't need any other felting mat to do this. If you um, have one of these, the seven needle felting tools, they do work on the earth mat, but you really have to push hard. In fact, this one doesn't even want to go in. So I think you're probably better off using um, what we call a brush mat with it. So you might have that anyway, and then you can just lay it on there and it will go in much easier than using the um, our um, earth friendly felting mat. It also doesn't work on any, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't work on any foam mat either. And um, you can also use three needle felting tools, um, which we have got the blue one here. That's an unbranded one that works. Or you can use the Clover pink three needle felting tool, which I I really I, I'm really sold onto the, these Clover tools now. I always thought it was just um it was just a marketing ploy, but they are definitely the quality is better. I promise you that. Right. So let's have a look in the camera. What I've done so far, not much. <laughs> But that's what it starts out like and I just have a quick read what people can definitely not be without when they are stranded on an island. So um, where do we start? I couldn't live without my dogs, we said that. Um, oh, <laughs> Meg says my lovely new mattress, then I could lie on it all day. Oh, that's um, not a bad idea. Um, Vampire Venom says I couldn't live without my medications. Other than that, I think my archer gear would come in very useful yeah i think medications are, are an extra anyway um marion says water obviously but chocolate as it would be lift my spirits yeah i'm with you oh, i'll tell you a chocolate story i bought myself a really nice bar of chocolates i don't i don't eat too much of it because i'm trying to stay off the sugar but this one was was high in um it was not as high as i probably should be eating but it was 62 percent of um chocolate and then it had um coconut and raspberry in it never seen that variety before and um when i go shopping the first thing i do is i hide the stuff that i don't want my family to eat because if i don't hide it it will go it will just go but i forgot to hide that and uh, lo and behold yesterday i, I remembered the chocolate and like oh i'm just gonna have a square of chocolate it was gone the worst thing about all of this is that it didn't matter who i asked nobody owned up for, to eating it and I knew somebody was lying and I still haven't got to the bottom of it. And I tried everything. I tried emotional manipulation. I tried, oh, come on, you can tell me. I won't be upset with you. Um, I tried, um, if you don't tell me now, I'm going to... I bet it was you. It was you, right? It was you. It was you. Um, I tried everything. Whoever ate it didn't budge. It could be all of, could have been all of them, to be honest. You know, there's there's me and five other people in my household. Could have been all of them. It was a complete um, sworn secrecy that um, I was never to find out. So, yeah, I still don't know who ate it. The chocolate wrapper was in the bin. So it was definitely eaten. Um, but yeah, anyway, chocolate. Yes, I'll have my own. If I'm on, a, on, if I'm on my own on an island, at least nobody will eat it. Um, I would have my kindle with hundreds of books to read while sunbathing the days away nice um merlingtons hello merlingtons i didn't mention you earlier i couldn't live without the internet so i can order loads more crafting goodies <laughs> yeah i can just imagine the post boat getting to your lonely island um rose says i would want my dogs with me um catherine says i would have my Fur babies bubble and squeak as they are good hunters and may be able to find me something to eat other than the mice they usually bring. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, what, you're going to have mice stew. Oh, um, Vampire Venom says, love everyone saying they'd have their pets. My housemate and I would have trouble with uh, that, though, as we have a better shrimp and a crested gecko. What's a better? I don't know what a beta is. I know what a shrimp is and a crested gecko, but I've no idea what a beta is. 
Susan says, I couldn't live without my family. Oh, bless you. Laura says, hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I now have Wi-Fi. I missed the second part of The Mermaid. Oh, no, Laura. I'm, oh, yeah, because you moved, didn't you? How are you settling in? I hope it's um, all going well. Nice to have you back. Right, let's move on to the next bit of the um, seascape. I am following the instructions. Snap. Right, the next bit is, um, is I love the next bit, because look, you've already got the different colours of the sea in this um in this beautiful top here, which is our blue turquoise top. That's an, um, something that we've used in fairies before, in our water fairies specifically. And um, again, you just you just tease the wool off as if you imagine this was a brush stroke. So before we, we had little tufts or little brush, um, um, what do you call them? Um, oh, I can't think now. Little brush... Um, whatever, stubs, stubs, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but now we have these really long, lovely brush strokes and you can lay that over um, your picture and you can lay it out either completely randomly as I'm doing now or you can pick the colours wherever you want them. And again, you don't need to pile it up really very thick because there's blue underneath still. So if a little bit of the blue shines through, that just it's just perfect. So that's absolutely fine. And you will have lots of wool left over, by the way. There. How does that look? I almost don't want to felt it down, but I'm going to. So again, individual needle, felt it down. Um, now I'm trying to make a bit of a stricter line here, because that is definitely now my extremely straight horizon. It's actually not that straight. Straight enough. Straight enough for me. Maybe not straight enough for Emma. But um, a very, very straight horizon there. And then, um, again, at the moment, I'm not too worried about this part here because um, where, the, where the sea meets the shore, because we're going to address all of that a little bit later. But I'm definitely keeping the horizon nice and straight now. And this is where I think the multi-tool comes in so useful because you can literally just felt it all down very fast. So if you have a single needle and you're felting along, I will give you enough time to um, at least fasten it on. And the, the, the wool that is in there, you can see how it's naturally um, already making patterns in the sea where you expect maybe some of the waves to break. Um, some parts are slightly darker where the sea is deeper. Some are more shallow. So like, for example, here, that looks like there's a, a deeper part of the sea. And then you've got little sort of um, whiter parts where maybe parts of the sea, there's like sea foam um, there as well. So it's all... It's all good fun to do this. But also remember, when you're felting on a small mat, you have to move it along, which is good to remind you that you do need to lift it off um, because it does get stuck onto the mat. So keep doing that and, um, and then continue going over it again if need be. And then you've added your... I've, I've added the C in in one go. You don't have to do that. You can do it in little bits. But because it's such a beautiful wool that just wants to be painted on, it just, um, yeah, you can just lay it out. And, and of course, you can add more to it if you want it to look slightly different in some areas. So if you want more turquoise to come through or something like that, then you can just add that on the top and pelt it down on top of it. Just work with small quantities to start with because your needle has to push every single fibre through the other side in this felt piece and um, and the needle can only do so much or the needles if you're using a multi-tool like I do at the moment. For the finer detail, go back to your single needle. There. I like it when the wool runs out over the picture because that um, that sort of looks to me is like it hasn't it's not finished this is just a little window um, that we're looking through to see what's out there and then the next bit you're going to do is you're actually going to put the beach down next now the um, no yes you are so now the beach is this um, I love this this is the honey caracal such a perfect color and such a perfect texture for beach it almost looks like sandy grains and um, or grainy sand um, whichever way and um, so 
before we said leave the blue shining through it doesn't really matter if a little bit shines through but now we're trying to cover the blue a little bit more um, thoroughly and at the moment what I'm doing is as I'm laying out the wool so this is something for you for a perspective as I'm laying out the wool I am um, it, it's kind of the wrong way around because you don't have you have the water lapping over the beach rather than the beach um, how can I say well the beach is also underneath the water but but it's it it if you would lay it out like this and you felt it down as a strict line it looks as if you're standing on an elevated point looking down to the sea that's sort of the only explanation you would have why there is a strict line so at the moment I'm putting the strict line in or strictish and you can see what I mean when you felt this down how that affects the perspective but what I want is I want this to be all shallow because we're going to put a boat on the beach in a minute and so I've got to in a minute I've got to make the water lap over the beach again so I, I do that in a minute what really works well is when you make any landscape picture or anything like that just occasionally take your eyes off it as you've been doing it look somewhere else then look at it again maybe take a photo of it um, and you get a completely new perspective as your eyes aren't just focused on one particular spot but they see the whole picture again and you it allows you to see the whole picture and you suddenly you might see things that you haven't seen before I love that about uh, needle felting landscapes it's such a fun thing to do while you are working away with your maybe with your single needle to get that beach felted down I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what's coming up over the next three weeks in terms of our live stream because this is the last sea themed um, live stream that we'll, we will be doing um, this year and although I don't want to admit it it feels a little bit autumnal now I get up really early in the morning and now at five o'clock it definitely has that sort of oh not like oh it's light let's get up great it's definitely a bit more dark there's no other way of putting it and even in the evening come half nine um, obviously this is we're based in the UK you might be on the other side of the world and for you it's the flip side you you might get that spring feeling but for us we're definitely heading towards the darker time of the year and um, so we are matching this with our live streams but we are still looking at the colorful and bright side of light life as we always do and so we've got the next live streams coming up we have got um, our scarecrow we have got um, a large pumpkin I have them all here all of those so I'm what I'm going to do is while whilst I'm talking about this I'm just going to grab the things that I should have grabbed earlier but we've got the witch we, I might have to shout a bit because I've got to move around and you might not hear me so clearly got the witch as a little witch as a last one I'm rummaging I'm still here um, and the scarecrow I've already got with me so I'm coming back and I will show you this, the witch the witch, the pumpkin, and the scarecrow. The witch makes me laugh. It is such a lovely one. So let's have a look at these projects here. Pumpkin. It's a it's a nice size. Um, the one that you're making might even be a bit bigger. We do have a pumpkin uh, wool mix, and um, in fact, it's a pumpkin pack. Comes with the instructions, and you can make tiny ones as well. You don't have to do a big one, but the live stream is about making a big pumpkin oh it's so heavy i can barely hold it there you go that's the pumpkin coming up and then got the little witch there you go i really love her she looks like she's um to me she's a learner witch she's got her hat is too big she's got to grow into it and her broom she's outgrown she needs to get a new one for her next birthday so she has got um lovely purple hair she has got um, a little face that's needle felted on there. She's sitting on her broom. She's got candy stripe um, legs with um, very green, slimy, slimy colored legs. And um, and that's it, basically. She's holding onto the broom and you can hang her up and let her whiz around wherever you are. So I really, I think she's a really nice one. She's a fairy size, so um, she might fit in with your fairies. And then you've all seen the oh god, you've all seen the scarecrow. 
he is um maybe put the witch on the pumpkin how about that there and the scarecrow you've seen him he's a handsome chap which um, you can pose him so that he's completely, he stands on his own because he has a wire um, that um, can sort of act as a third leg and um, you might not notice it too much. Or you can you can stand him in a plant pot. I don't think he likes standing on this mat here now. Come on, behave yourself. He's got a mind of his own today. His legs are all gone wonky. Oh, dear. I think he's... Um, yeah, he's definitely not obliging today. He's, um, I think his legs need felting down a bit more. Um, anyway, he can um, stand on his own normally, promise. Come on, just for one second. Ta-da! Oh, he's doing it! I knew he could do it! Slight crooked, um, like a coquettish look there. And um, he's got a little straw hat on, I don't touch him. He's got three little mice that are creeping around in his um, top, which is um, a hessian top. All of this you get in your in, in your um, scarecrow pack as well, which I have got here, but I have to pull it out. It's a, it's a big pack and you can buy that as well to be ready for the, um, for the make along. However, if you don't have that, then you can of course um, also just read what the instructions on our YouTube channel, what you might need to make him and you can still craft along without anything. We don't always want to talk you into buying anything. We just want to make it as easy for you as possible. So if you've got lots of things already in your stash, you might be able to make him. He doesn't also want to sit down now. No, he's not very obliging today. You are a very naughty scarecrow. Right. Sit down. There. He's sitting again. Right, so that's just a little interlude. So these um, three live streams are coming up. The Scarecrow is a bit of a long... I actually can't remember now. I'm just going to have a quick look again. So we've got um, three dates for the Scarecrow. 17th and 24th and 31st of August. So that takes care of August. And then we've got the Large Pumpkin, which is two days in September, the 7th and the 14th. And the Little Witch is the 21st of September. That's what we've got planned for you. And that takes us already into the second half of September. Scary thought, scary thought. Right, I've knocked that, um, that um, starfish off. Right, so um, let's have another little... Oh, let's read what, uh, what people are saying. Um, Uh, oh, I'm starting to read backwards again. That's never, it's never good because it never makes any sense. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, that's what we said. If I'm stuck on a farm, I don't think I could live without a sheep. I could continue felting using its fleas. Well, yes. If the question was, what you would you bring if you were stuck on a farm? Then you you can take your sheep to a, a, a lonely island as well. It's absolutely fine. And then you have the wool at first hand and you can wash it in the water. Talking about it, we are so excited because it is time. We've got 21 excited um, ladies coming to our summer weekend away starting this Friday. And if you're one of them, then I, I'm sure you're as excited as we are. Um, I am, feel a bit like an ant at the moment. I'm going back and forth, bringing more stuff, more stuff from the workshop to have it all ready here. You'll be so happy to see what you get in your goodie bag and um, and what you, what we are, um, what we've got um, lined up for you. Really excited. Um, God. So I'm talking to myself now. Um, Jay Choi says, picking only one thing is difficult. I'd bring my blankie towel, versatile, what you can do with one. Oh, Jackie says, my partner. Well, there you go. That's the first one. <laughs> Nobody else is bringing their partner. Um, Diana Oldacre says, I would like to take a complete set of makers fairy kits. Oh, you're so kind, Diana. Emma, she's one. Um, Vampire Venom. Better is another name for Siamese fighting fish. Oh, I see. We're talking fish there. Yes, I think I've, I, I think I knew that actually. Now that you mentioned it, I think I was more in gecko land, thinking of um, a dry a dry animal rather than a wet animal. And Serena says I'd have to take my felting kit. Finally, get some peaceful felting. I often say I want to go to prison for a month, as it would be holiday, being on my own without four annoying children. Haha. -ha. 
The only thing is, apparently you can't take your felting needles into prison. Not a good idea. Try it. Better get stranded on a lonely island. Um, Gina says, I would take along loads of crafting projects if I was stuck on an island. Nice. Carol says, I would like, I would take lots of books and my sunnies make the most of the piece. Melanie says, beautiful blues, cannot wait to make this one. Um, Donna says, I'd like to prop the picture up against something. Go out of the room, get a cuppa or take the dog out for a walk. See the picture differently. That's a really good idea because our brains sometimes just need to have a break from staring at just one I mean, it's our eyes that are staring, but our brains that are making sense of it. So take your eyes off it and then look at it again with fresh eyes. It's a perfect tip. Thank you, Donna, for that. Um, o van der Ver says, love the, vi vi love the witch. That's a really, that is really hard to say when you're German. Um, and Bridget says, oh, hello, Bridget. If I was stranded on an island, I have to have a God's Beckett needle. <laughs> yes, which we, of course, use all the time. And um, looking forward to the witch. Shame my birthday isn't a week later, so I could make a long though. Oh. Um, Melanie says, one thing. Hmm, if I could not have my needle felt supplies and Steffi, I suppose my husband would do. Oh, <laughs> Julie says, I couldn't live without my dog. Merlington's Melanie, I'm leaving hubby behind so I can have some peace. There you go. Right, let's, um, I'm not commenting, I'm not commenting on husbands, That's that's that never works out well. So I'm going to continue filling the beach in a bit more, I can still see a bit of blue through it, but if you can see some blue through it, don't panic over it, because there's a great big boat sitting on top of it in a minute, so you're probably going to cover a lot of that up anyway, and we, we're also adding more details to the beach in a minute too. Um, I've just got to catch up a bit get get the beach down and um, what I tried to say is if you look at this picture now so if you're standing here and you have a really clear line it looks like you're slightly elevated on top of a, a sandbank or something like that and you're looking down but actually what we want is we want the water to come over the beach <clears throat> so what we need to do is we need to make it lap back over the beach again so you're using a little bit of um, the blue tops that you've got left over and just add them so that they're running over the beach and then what often happens when um, when the water hits the beach it sort of breaks into little um, foamy patches and so um, to represent that we will add a little bit of white onto that edge here to make it part of um, the whole thing again rather than so you can just paint again like you did before with the sky. Just add a little bit of white onto the shore side here. <clears throat> so you're integrating the beach now into the picture rather than it being an, an elevated sand dune or something like that that you're standing on and looking down from. Of course you can have it that way too, but that would be a different picture. And I, as I said before, I love, love it when the wool spills out. There you go. I'm going to give that whole thing a bit of a faster going over and that's that's looking better already right so now we've got the cliff to do for this we've got a, um, a dark brown this is our dark brown portuguese merino and um, I'm just going to paint that literally into this area here by just stabbing it on. You really want the top of the cliff to be quite a crisp line between the the um, the sky and the um, the cliff itself. And then there's going to be lots happening at the base of the cliff because the the, the cliff itself is not just a piece of rock sticking into the into the um, the sea. There is actually a sandy shore. Um, along this particular cliff as well. Well, that's what I've decided that there would be. So you can um, alter the picture again, as I said, if you want to. So whilst I'm colouring all of this in at the moment, I'm also adding more colours over the top in a minute. So just colour that wedge in. And remember to lift off anything you do. Step that down a bit more. in any gaps 
need very little wool for this. Very little wool. This is a this is a very short fibered uh, Portuguese merino, which um is I just I just love using the different wools for different things. So for the for this cliff that works absolutely perfect because it has got that sort of already um quite rocky appearance. And then what uh, we want to do is we want to continue the sea shore here. In fact, on, on the picture there, I've got these two, they're actually joining together. So I'm, I might just bridge that gap um, so that it's like literally like a, a curve. And felt this down. So you're getting your beach back in the picture. And I'm going to come up a little bit here. So I'm closing that gap. Work in small quantities, it pays off. There's no rush to pile it all on and then you're not going to be able to felt it down or it's in the wrong place and you've got to pull lo loads off again. So work in, in um, small patches and batches. <laughs> small batches patches and patches and um, I will just let you know that when I get to felting the rowing boat onto the beach that is when um, we're gonna pick a winner and Emma will be watching this Thursday on Facebook as well on the 12th so if you want to be in for another chance to win um, our fairy decorations bundle then it will be Emma changing hands my right hand arm is getting a bit tired with all this stabbing there we go and um so what i'm going to do next is i am going to add a tiny bit of green here um where the cliff is as well just it's just to break it up a bit so sometimes you've got sort of gorse bushes and vegetation on on cliffs which um, you can just put a little bit of green on there. It's, it's a rocky, it's a rocky underneath, so it might be only there in 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 the very sparse manner, so to speak. So keep it quite sparse, and it just adds a little bit more three-dimensional perspective into the picture. Again, pull that down as well. And keep looking at your picture um, in different perspectives and aspects. Just see it in a different way. By um, take a photo, look at it through your um, look at it once you've taken the photo on a on your phone. Um, stand in front of a mirror. That's another way of looking at it. Get your um, a friend or family member to hold it up for you so you can look at it. All of that makes a difference to how you see the creation that you've just made. And um, and now I've got a lovely sea here. I've got my sky. I've got the beach um, here. I could probably fill it in a bit more, but it's okay because stuff's going on top. I've got some seahorses. I could, uh, no, not seahorses. What are they called? White horses. I could add a few more into the actual um, um, sea here. Felt it down. This is optional now. You can add in whatever you like. You could even add some of that darker blue in to make it really like have really deep parts of the sea there. And it just adds movement and dimensions into what might just be a flat, um, flat sea otherwise. There you go. And anything you do like that, it just it's magic how you put it down and you never think it makes any kinds of kind of sense. So I'm going to now switch over to um, using my water soluble paper. You've got a bit of water soluble paper in there. Now what's special about water soluble paper is that it completely dissolves in water, which is why it's called water soluble paper. However, for this purpose, we're not even going to dissolve it in paper. We just need it to make a very precise shape. Um, because if I asked you now to put a rowing boat on there, you can't draw on it, so you're gonna have to free, free, uh, not free draw, but f yeah, free needle felt basically. So, but instead of that, you can use your water soluble paper and lay it on top of the template that you get in your um, pack. If you haven't got the pack, then I'm sure you can find um, a rowing boat outline somewhere. 
And then all you're doing is with your pencil, you're drawing onto the water soluble paper the main lines that you can see. We're not worried about the colors. This is just the colors on this um, on this template page is just so that you can remind yourself what, where the colors are going when you are felting onto this in a minute. So draw around the template. It's, it's an old rowing boat, so it doesn't have to be that neat. Make sure you cut, get all the lines in there. And do, do make them quite thick, the lines, because um, you have to felt on top of um, on top of the whole shape. And so sometimes you, well, in most cases, you can see a strong line through the wool that you felt it down. Right, there we go. That's all the lines um, drawn on now. And now I've got to remind myself, I've done it so many different ways. So yes, that's right. So we now, first off, start coloring in this rowing boat. So back comes my felting mat and I'm starting out by using the um, the brown which is my cliff color and I'm going to fill in that this is a bit like coloring um, a bit like you know when you color in a picture coloring book you just have to get the wool into um, in between the lines sorry I'm working with a lot here but I'm teasing it out use a little bit less so I'm making that wooden frame first this is exactly when you felt into the wool felt, you also have to lift your shape off because it does get stuck on. Now you have to be a little bit gentler with pulling this off because the water soil paper is not by any means as um, strong as the um, felt. You can also try and re use the reverse of our felting mat. It works really well with um, something as sort of flat like that. It's quite... Um, a different feel to it because you're going through the the, the firmer base first but it, it's very satisfying there's sort of almost like a the feeling is a little bit like when you're cutting um, um, a chocolate brownie and you've got the you've got the sort of firmer outer and then you go to the gooey inside that's what it feels like felting on the felting mud it's like cutting through something firm first and getting to the soft inside that's what it feels like to me might feel very different to you I do have a lot of references to food when it comes to needle felting always so felt this down in that way fill in the frame um, in terms of neatness you don't have to be too neat with this at the moment because um, all of this will be transferred onto the picture in a minute and also we will cut around the uh, the main shape um, to cut the excess water soluble paper off so you can in theory make the outer lines quite a bit neater when you cut around it get the wool down First, remember to lift it off. It's really crucial. You you really don't want to get to a point where this tears in in half because you've forgotten to lift it off. And um, so then, um, once you've co co uh, colored in the frame, then you're going to use the yellow in your palette, and you color in the middle. This is where it becomes is quite handy if you can see the lines through the yellow that you've drawn underneath because then you know where the crossbars need to go in a minute. If um, at any point you see sort of like it's a little bit holy, there's, there's, you know, you haven't covered it very densely, that's okay because it's going onto the main picture and then you can continue working on adding more wool to it where it's needed. Just get, get the boat colored in, um, even if it's not perfect at the moment. Just get it colored in. Now we're using the slightly lighter brown compared to the other. This is very similar wool to the Portuguese Merino. It's just that it's a light, well, we call it a hair brown, but it's the same type of wool. It's also, um, it's also a Portuguese Merino, just in a lighter blonder color. Felt that down where these bars are, which you can just about still see through the yellow wool that I've 
put down. Otherwise, refer to your template and just do it by eye. There. And just one more right at the front. And then I'm going to lift this off again so that I don't fasten it on. And then it's just the outer needs to be colored in. And I'm starting with the side with a dark blue. This is what we used a little bit in the sky. We're using now a little bit more on the boat. Color the sides in as best as you can. I'm keeping the back of the boat uncolored, un uncolored at the moment because I, I want to mix a little bit of white into the blue. It um, Again, it breaks up the um, flatness of the boat and it, it, it sort of gives the impression like the paint is fading at the back. You can also do it on the sides. but So with a, a neater shape like this, I'm, going, I'm sticking with my single needle at the moment and mixing the wool for the back of the sheep, back of the sheep, back of the boat. I've got sheep on my brain, tell you. You can mix it and then lay it on and felt it down. So that's just a very quick job to color the boat in, which is not, which is not a finished, um, it's not a finished shape or project yet because we need to attach it onto the actual seascape and um, you can definitely see through it still, which is fine. And all you need to do now is have some little sharp scissors and then just cut around the edge. Now, stick to the drawn edge, even if you missed a bit to fill in with wool. Um, cut the excess wool off if you want. Neaten the outer shape. And as soon as I put this on to the picture, that's when Emma is going to draw a winner. But before I do that, I'm just going to go in the big camera and I will just tell you I was telling you about we've got our summer weekend away that is finally happening after 18 months of delays and um, we've also got um, our winter retreat that we're planning already now we're going back to a venue that we've been where we've been at before and um, we've already got um, a handful of people who have rebooked from the time that we went there last time because it was an absolutely amazing um event so the details are it's taking place 28th to the 30th of january 2022 this is the last weekend in january it's um it is more expensive than our summer um weekend away but it is all all together a little bit more uh, luxurious um we haven't decided on the needlefeld project yet however lots of people have said i don't care what you're doing i just want to come and and i think we never disappoint in what we are offering that needs to be made. If you want to come and you say, but I want to make that, then let us know because you could be part of the decision making. Lots of people wish that for their Christmas because then they have Christmas and they've got something else to look forward to. Um, it is, again, a Friday afternoon arrival, Sunday afternoon departure. This uh, venue, Hawkwood College, is in um, is near Stroud in Gloucestershire. Definitely worth looking it up. It's a beautiful, um, a beautiful venue with uh, where they grow their own food. We will be served organic, home cooked meals and um, amazing cakes and biscuits. So that's basically something to put in your diary and put on your wish list but don't wait too long because we won't we will not have as many people um on this one as we allow on our summer retreat it's all indoors so we restrict the numbers um and um yeah that if you want to find out more send us a mes message at info at the makers or at least be put on our mailing list and um and then we we can um keep you in the loop Right, I've got my picture, I've got my boat. Now I need to position the boat on there, maybe like that. And now I need to felt it on and then I need to finish off the details. So that's all we've got left to do. So I'm gonna just have a quick look at the um, comments here. Eva says I must have my cat with me. She might have a different view on that. 
Um, oh, we've got a new viewer here. Um, Sanshra. Sanshra. Hello, Sanshra. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, oh, hi, Pam. Oh, I'm so sorry, Pam. I only saw earlier that uh, you started on the panda bear. <laughs> yeah, my life is um, racing away with me at the moment. But yeah, the panda bear. So Pam Dassey, um is gets our makers boxes and she often has on a Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. She um, she make, she opens the makers box, not having looked in before and just does the project whilst she's chatting away to um, lots of lovely people. And uh, so Pam Dathi, definitely look her up, go over onto her channel, especially if you want to see um, lots of our makers boxes that um, she's made live from beginning to end. And I think she started with the panda bear last, well, yes, um, the day before yesterday on the Sunday. And that, of course, is our August makers box. So I will try, oh no, I won't even be able to do it. I might just be able to sneak in on um, Sunday this week because um, unless, no, I, I probably will have to tidy up after the re weekend away. So I'm, I'm apologizing already, uh, Pam, that I haven't, I won't be able to be there. Be there. Um, Lorna says, I love seascapes. Um, oh yes, and before that, um, oh, Pam loves seascapes too. My favorite landscape is a seascape. Thanks, Steffi and Emma. Jane says, I would honestly take my husband with me. He's so helpful and keeps me going when things get tough, as they do some days. Nice. That's so lovely. I hope he, you, I hope you tell him that too, Jane. It's no good telling us. Um, and Bridget says, I can walk and dream by the sea with my dogs too. That's nice. I don't, we don't live close enough to the sea, but it's not that far away. Um, <laughs> Bridget says that's so funny who cuts brownies I eat them whole I've got this vision of you eating a whole baked tray of brownies like literally biting into it that's hilarious um Rose says um I would be there if I if I was close oh bless you Pam says the panda is so cute I'm enjoying making him oh thank you Pam um Rose says my panda is almost done love it great well we love to see them so hop over onto our everyone a makers um Facebook group if you're not a member yet do ask to join and um, you can share it then we always have subscription um, competitions as well so do share um your subscription makes or anything you make from the makers stuff we, we'd love to see it and Serena says I've just finished my panda and loved making him oh thank you and Ashley says hope fully a maker's roadshow for us who are too far away right I'm going to start fastening the boat on now and um let's see if we can get Emma to um pick a winner right I'm felting the um boat straight on what with the wool that I've already added I'm also realizing what the time is um, I've got two minutes to finish this off to stick to my hour so I'm literally just felting everything that I've added onto the water-soluble paper onto the picture straight away now. This is <clears throat> the point where you can even out any um, things that, that you, you think, oh, needs a bit more of this or needs a bit more of that. Remember to stub in the yellow quite um, deep because that is below the brown bars that are going across at the top. So you can create a 3 d by... Um, with with the wool, you can do that actually, but actually having a little bit of three D happening in the in the picture without using different colors and shades and uh, and so on, and um, and tuck in the edge of that water soluble paper. So stab it right into the picture. It should just disappear, literally disappear. And um, Emma has drawn a winner today, which is the tenth of August here on YouTube and Gina is the lucky winner and on Thursday Emma will announce a different winner on Facebook at 7 p.m. So the boat's on. Um, it, probably, it should have probably been a bit more on the beach but that's fine. Now I'll show you some tricks of how you can um, give sort of the impression of wet beach. Use the darker um, the darker brown which you use for the crossbars on the these these um, planks across the boat put that down and it looks like you've got wet beach because it's a shade darker than the one that you've used I'm actually extending the beach a little bit now because my boat is definitely floating in the water so add a little bit of um, of this wool into onto the beach to make give it a wet 
impression. That's uh, one trick that you can do to break up the beach a little bit. There you go. You can also um, use the curls that you get in the pack. Um, and the brown curls I love particularly because they look like old rope. So you might have to cut the curls. And if you if you felt them down, if you can manage to split them, then that's great. But if you felt them down as they as they literally are curled, then that to me looks like old rope. Might looks like something else to you. But old rope on a beach, that's good. That adds a bit of character. There you go. If you can get them, uh, if you get them to felt down neater, like a literally like a curl, then um, that's really good. Definitely cut the uh, cut the curls rather than pull them because you will pull them apart and then they they lose their sort of tightness. So you can felt that down as well. You the curls will vary from pack to pack as um, sheep wool often does when it comes naturally off the sheep and then you can use the um, the green curls for seaweed that can go on the beach as well if you want have a bit scattered around there it's it's adding details that um, you might not be so slap dash as I am but just um, felt it down a little bit more neat um, and that adds into it. And then if you finally, if you want to um, have the sun go down here, um, back there, then use a tiny bit of yellow, tiny bit of yellow, tiny bit of orange where the actual sun is. So keep that sort of quite concentrated. There. And then let it spill into the water like, um, like it's colouring in like a reflection in the water. So you might need to add a little bit more. This is optional, you don't have to do that if you don't want it to be a sunrise or a sunset. And basically your picture's finished. And that, all of that in an hour, and I could have done it even faster. So that's, um, that's all there is to it. Um, remember we have got um, on our YouTube channels how to make these lovely shells. They're really lovely surround for, for um, a picture like that. Have the odd, um, have the odd uh, starfish crawling in there as well. Maybe you've got a whale in the background sweeping across. It's a big whale there. It's a big, big whale coming across there, but they are big. Maybe you've got a pretty mermaid sitting um, on the shore side as well. Um, so you can, you, you we have done so many of these uh, sea themed um, creatures now that you can add a whole um, menagerie together there and, um, and share it with us how you have decorated your seascape. Um, that's basically all from me today. It was a pleasure to have you here again. Thank you so much. Give us the thumbs up if you haven't done so yet. It, it works different on every device. Um, um, device. So I know that some people are struggling to know how to comment, how to um, give us thumbs up and so on. But um, if, you ever, if you ever want some help, then just get in touch with us, message us. Um, give us a, a like on our Facebook group, um, The Makers, so squigglybit, themakers.co.uk. And on Instagram, that's Facebook there. And on Instagram, we are squigglybit, the makers, just that. And also on Twitter, share with us, tag us, um, send us pictures, um, talk to us, come to our retreat, see us at shows. All of that, um, there's no getting away from us one way or another. And remember that next week we're starting on the Scarecrow. He's behaving himself now. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you all then. And um, you have got time to get your Scarecrow pack if you choose to do that. That's all from me today. Just um, everybody's saying, oh, Diana Oldegger says, Scottish retreat. Yeah, maybe on the Isle of Mull, Diana. Maybe we should come to you. Um, yeah, yeah, I could even find you a wonderful venue here on the beautiful Isle of Man. I, <laughs> as if I didn't know what you were going to say. I'd love to come to the Isle of Mull. Anyway, maybe one day, who knows? So, goodbye everybody. That's all from me today. See you soon. Take care and um, lots of love. Bye.